Good afternoon in Seattle and good morning in Taiwan, from Taiwan. Uh, welcome to the Roundtable, Learn, launching the Encyclopedia of Taiwan Studies. Uh, the, this session, this panel, this uh, Roundtable, will, uh, we will launch the Encyclopedia of Taiwan Studies by providing, uh, by making a collective uh, pre collective progress report of the encyclopedia uh, thus far. Uh, the encyclopedia has begun in August year 2020. That means less than two years ago, we began this idea and finalized the, the, the editor-in-chief and associate editors. And then in October 2020, we finalized the Head words list. That means the entries, titles, and we are matching. We, we are matching head words with the potential contributors, and then by December, uh, we begin all the associate editors to begin the uh, searching, looking for and identifying the possible qualified contributors for each entry. And so uh, in the last one year or so, we have been uh, successfully, uh, of course, without, with some difficulties, um, but good thing that we, all the, uh, with the help of our associate editors, we solve all the most of the problems we are collecting. We have been collecting the uh, uh, finished, completed uh, entries. So we are hoping by this fall, we will launch the version the, the, the electronic version or the version of the online edition uh, consisting about 30% first and then another 30%. Uh, so we hope for it by the end of this year and uh, early next year, early next year, we can have the e-version of the encyclopedia ready for viewer to, uh, to watch, to read and to, to use. So this morning we have a, a big crowd. And uh, first of all, I would like to thank the speakers online and on site who are associate editors who helped me to make this uh, task uh, workable and working uh, until now. Uh, so uh, first let me, uh, let me introduce each one of them uh, and accordingly, according to the list of the uh, uh, the booklet, as you all have, uh, the first speaker will be Yuri Tadmer. Tadmer, uh, he's a Brio publishing editor, and as you know, the the Brio Encyclopedia of Taiwan Studies uh, is uh, published by Brio Publications. Uh, so we are very grateful that uh, uh, Brio will take such a daring. Uh, endeavor. Uh, the second speaker is uh, Nancy Guy, Professor Nancy Guy. Uh, I'm sure he, she's the, um, on site. And she's a professor at the University of California, uh, San Diego. And she's uh, graciously helped me in charge of the music uh, field of the encyclopedia. And the third speaker is a Professor Scott Simon, an anthropologist. Uh, in Department of Sociology, University of Ottawa, Canada. And uh, Scott is, help, is uh, responsible for two, and two fields. One is anthropology, the other one is indigenous studies. And Scott has been working very hard uh, on this. Thank you, Scott. And the number four is uh, Robert, Professor Robert Weller. Uh, Rob is the anthropologist at the Department of Anthropology Boston University, USA, and uh, thank you, about Rob, to uh, to uh, to agree um, in, to be in charge of the, uh, the religion studies. Number five is uh, Professor Devi Fell, and uh, he is a political scientist at the SOAS, University of London, UK, and also the director of the Taiwan Center for Taiwan Studies. And Devi is responsible for domestic politics. Thank you, Devi. And number six is uh, Dr. Mingye Rongsli. 
and she's now in uh, Windrow, and uh, she's also the uh, editor in chief of the International Journal of Taiwan Studies, and she's affiliated with the SOAS as well at the, the Taiwan Center and University of London, UK. And Ming Ye is uh, helping me to uh, be in charge of the uh, films and documentaries. And number six is Professor uh, He Mingxiu, Mingxiu He, uh, a sociologist in the Department of Sociology, National Taiwan University. And Mingxiu is uh, helping me uh, to be taking care of the sociology uh, field entries. And Mingxiu has been working very hard as well and uh, very, very efficient as well. Thank you, Mingxiu. And number eight is a uh, professor, a uh, director, uh, Long Zhi, Zhang, Zhang Long Zhi. And now he is a uh, uh, second to the, the directorship of the National Museum, National Museum of Taiwan History. And also uh, he is a, a fellow uh, at the Institute of Taiwan History, Academia Sinica. Uh, uh, Long Zhi and Peter Kang, uh, both are responsible for the entries of uh, Taiwan history. History, And number nine, the last but not the least, is Professor Chiu Guifen, Guifen Chiu, and she is responsible for, uh, for the literature and literature. And she is a professor at the Graduate Institute of Taiwan Literature and Transnational Cultural Studies at the National uh, Zhongxing University. Taiwan, and uh, so the order will be like this to 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 follow, and I I will ask each one of you to speak um, seven minutes or so because we have uh, nine people on the line. So then we and then then we can have uh, uh, some time left for Q and A. I'm sure uh, many of the uh, audience, more maybe our viewers, may be interested to know more about the Brio's Encyclopedia of uh, Taiwan Study. Uh, just we, before we began, uh, actually in the last week or so, and um, this encyclopedia has uh, received a lot of attention by the media's televisions in, in Taiwan. And they are very curious about why Brio publisher in Leiden, Netherlands, will be in, is interested in publishing uh, the Encyclopedia of Taiwan Study, and what what made real interest in such field, which is new and uh, and progressing and growing, still growing, and so um, so and also what is the meaning of this uh, of this encyclopedia, and what are included in this encyclopedia, and who are working on it, who uh, who have contributed to. It. Uh, just give you a brief, um, brief uh, numbers. Uh, we will have uh, about 600 entries at t in total, and we will involve about 400 uh, scholars who have contributed, who are asked uh, to contribute uh, various entries in different fields. And so, so that is the my part of the report. My my my, my report on my part. So let me uh, invite uh, Dr. Yuri Tedmon, the publisher, who is responsible for the whole thing, uh, who initiated the idea and contacted me and invited me to be the chief editor and also give me the authority to uh, invite all the 14 uh, associate editors. So today we have eight associate editors. Uh, appearing uh, today to make you report. So let's invite Yuri Kadma. Yuri, it's yours. Thank you very much, Professor Xiao. Thank you both for your nice introduction and also for accepting Grill's invitation to become editor-in-chief of the Encyclopedia of Taiwan Studies. I would also like to thank the organizers of the World Congress of Taiwan Studies for inviting me and for organizing this special panel about the Encyclopedia of Taiwan Studies. This is a, a great honor for me. I'm really sorry that I cannot be with you in person. 
Um, but I'm very happy that everything is working out technically and I can join you virtually. And I will be available later for questions and answers. Um, first, I would like to put the Encyclopedia of Taiwan Studies in the context of Brill's overall publishing program in Taiwan Studies. So we have been publishing on Asian studies. Brill has been publishing on Asian studies since the 18th century, including on China. Uh, Brill was the first uh, publisher in continental Europe to even own a Chinese font. So we have a very, very long history of Chinese studies. Later, uh, first it was more Sinology and later China studies and more recently Taiwan studies in its own right. Uh, we have published sporadically books on uh, Taiwan before, but our program in Taiwan studies began in earnest in 2015 when we started publishing the Chinese Taiwan Yearbook of International Law and Affairs in cooperation with the Chinese Taiwan Society of International Law. Um, the editor of the yearbook is, and excuse my pronunciation, I have no background in Chinese studies at all. The editor uh, is Ma Ying Zhao. Uh, next, we got a huge boost in 2018 when we launched the International Journal of Taiwan Studies co-sponsored uh, by Academia Sinica and the European Association of Taiwan Studies. The editor-in-chief of the journal is Mingye Ronsley. Um, and uh, this has really given our program a big boost towards the direction of humanities and uh, social sciences. I should mention that Brill publishes mostly on three fields, humanities, social sciences, and international law. So it happened that we started with international law with our Taiwan studies and then expanded to humanities and social sciences. Next came the Brill series in Taiwan studies, which is a monograph series, which, may also, which also publishes um, edited volumes. It was launched just last year in 2021 and the series editors are Nikki Alsford and Mark Harrison. Now we are working on two very, very large publications about Taiwan studies, because now that we have a monograph series, a journal, and a yearbook, we decided this was time to, uh, to start publishing reference works on Taiwan studies. The field is mature enough and deserves to have authoritative reference works. So we first started working on a handbook of Formosan languages, which, uh, which is the, in the final processes of being edited. It will be a four volume set covering all indigenous languages of Taiwan. Um, and the, sub, uh, the subtitle of the handbook is actually the indigenous languages of Taiwan, just for those few people who don't make the connection between Formosa and Taiwan. The editors are Paul Jiankui Li, Elizabeth Zaytun, and Rick de Busser, who are all based in uh, Taiwanese institutions. Uh, it will be published uh, in four volumes, as I mentioned, uh, and also as an electronic database over the years 2023 and 2024. And finally, the jewel in the crown is the Encyclopedia of Taiwan Studies, which is also planned as a four volume set, but we have been overwhelmed by, by the wealth of the materials. It might actually end up being a five volume set. We're not sure yet. Um, the editor-in-chief in chief is Professor Michael Xiao, and there are 14 associate editors. We are very grateful to Professor Xiao and to the 14 associate editors, as well as to the 400 contributors who have been working with us on the uh, encyclopedia. Uh, so this is very generally what I have to tell you, but if there are any specific questions, I would be very happy to answer your questions. Um, right now, I would like to play a short video that has been prepared by the project manager of uh, the Encyclopedia of Taiwan Studies at Brill. Her name is Nora Capaccioni, and she has prepared a short video showing what the encyclopedia is and how, uh, how it is used. And I have taken the advice of the technical team. So they have downloaded the video in advance. 
just to make sure that there are no technical problems. So uh, Daniel, if you are there, you can please play the video now. Respected Taiwan Study Scholars, good day. My name is Eleonora Capazzoni, Project Manager for the Encyclopedia of Taiwan Studies here at Brill, and it is my pleasure today to guide you across the better version of our online publication. It is a massive work, comprising almost 600 entries authored by more than 300 scholars worldwide and aimed at presenting a comprehensive academic overview of Taiwan's rich cultures. 这是个宏大的出版物，它包括着将近六百篇、有三百多全世界学者而写的文章。它的宗旨是提供台湾丰富文化的一种全面学术概览。Please note that this is a special preview for this conference. The official release will proceed in installments, with the first portion of the content scheduled to be loaded online at the end of this year, and the last portion to be published in late 2023 together with the print version. We hope you will enjoy today's sneak peek. 请你们注意,这是为今天的会议而特意安排的预览。正式的出版物要分期发行。天子版的第一部分将年底发布,最后的一部分要2023年底跟纸质版同时出版。我们希望你们能够享受今天的先读为快。Okay, let us start. First of all, I share my screen. 好,现在我们开始吧。this is the way the encyclopedia will look to the users. Here you can see the cover, displaying a map of Taiwan with the iconic plum blossoms. Next to it is a short description of the publication's scope and aims, along with a list of its excellent editors. This is the encyclopedia. 旁边还有该出版物范围与目的的简介和它优秀编辑的名单。Following, we have the table of contents, illustrating the entries by section. The encyclopedia contains 15 sections covering all relevant topics to provide users with a complete and approachable access point to the most important aspects of Taiwan history and heritage. Anthropology, domestic politics, history, music. As you can see, all is just one click away. 接下来我们能看到目录。文章是按照一套章节来组织的。百科全书的十五个章节包罗所有台湾历史和文化遗产的最重要方面，以给用户提供一种彻底而且实用的入口。人类学、国内政、历史、音乐都可以一点击就接触
，引发标签页暂时还没有内容。正式公布之前，我们团队会将作者名单等参考材料认真上载。This is all the time we have today. Thank you very much for your attention. We hope that your interest is sparked for this most compelling piece of scholarship, and that you will join us in looking forward to the official release of the Encyclopedia of Taiwan Studies. This is our content for today. We hope you will join us in looking forward to the official release of the Encyclopedia of Taiwan Studies. This is our content for today. We hope you will join us in A pleasant continuation of your day and best wishes from Bril. Bril 学术出版社祝你们美好的一天，身体健康，工作顺利。Already,、um, in terms of numbers,、um, there are a couple of reasons for that. One is that、um, I think it's fair to say that a good deal of scholarship on music in Taiwan. Has dealt specifically with music sound. That is to say, analysis of what you hear, and that isn't always of terrific interest to anyone, but people exactly in that field. So when we look at music scholarship、um, for this Taiwan studies, we need to talk about it in its cultural, political, economic context. So we need to be able to say something that is of interest to people who are. Specializing in areas other than just the sound of music. So when I was creating this list of entries, I had to think about first other publicate、uh, published works because,、um, as Professor Shao kept drilling into us, this isn't a encyclopedia of Taiwan. It's an encyclopedia of,、uh, encyclopedia of Taiwan studies, and so that is a really important distinction. So、um, in picking out music entries, I had to think about whether those entries, whatever topics they were, were there were enough publications that actually reached out to scholars in other areas that said something about Taiwan, not just about the sound that you hear. So that was the、uh, really important criteria for making the selection. So while a kind of musical performance might be super important in Taiwan. That isn't to say that it has necessarily gained the interest of scholars who are looking with a Taiwan studies lens. So that is、um, the kind of lens that I had to use to choose the entries.、Um, I think that's sort of the main point. And then we can look at the slide, and you can see what subjects I ended up choosing.、Um, there were originally I'm tasked with coming up with music entries. But there were a couple of really important、um, performative genres in Taiwan that have gained scholarly attention and are super important in Taiwan's cultural life. And the first of those would be、um, Cloud Gate Dance Theater. I mean, you can possibly not have Cloud Gate because of the attention that is gained in many realms, including scholarship. So that's why my section we ended up calling it music and performance, not just music. And then another thing like that might be this this entry, cultural policy on traditional music and theater. So it's looking at general state policy or policy on、um, these performing genres, all kinds of performing genres、uh, involving music and even theater. So there was one other really important subject that. Uh, we needed to fit into this encyclopedia, and that was the PD Puppet Theater. And、um, Mingye Ronzi、uh, and I were back and forth about where this should go. She's doing cin cinema, and I'm doing music and performance, and ends up in her category, and that's fine so long as it's、um, in this work. And I just for your interest, I put the contracted word count here. And you can see that the largest entry is by Chen Chunbin, who's here with us today. And a 5,000-word entry was pretty significant in the context of this volume, but it's a really important subject in Taiwan and in Taiwan music studies, and that's why he's got that big entry. The others are basically between a thousand, and I guess the next biggest one is 2,400.、Um, one massive disappointment was the、um, contracted author's failure to produce, even though he swore a number of times he was doing it, on Mando Pop. I'm still 
not happy about that. And I'm still um, thinking, I, I recently contacted Nora and asked her, is it too late? Got it. My gosh, I talked longer than I expected. Sorry about that. Um, anyway, I'm still looking for someone. I guess we still have a kind of, uh, we can extend the deadline there to find someone to do this topic that has had, has gained quite a lot of scholarly attention, especially in publications in Chinese in Taiwan. And then there are also important ones in English too. So that's it. I'll leave it there. So thank you very much. Okay. Hello, bonjour, uh, I'll take off my mask now. So first of all, I wanted to, again, express my thanks to everybody. I'm happy to see Nora. I know what she looks like now. And her Chinese is incredible. She sounds like she could be working for you know, a Chinese airline or you know, broadcasting service because it's just perfect. But anyway, I wanted to uh, talk. I, I, I was in charge of two sections here, so I wanted to talk a bit about that. Um, I also wanted to say a few words about how I came to Taiwan studies and what that means to me. But I first went to Taiwan in 1996 to do my PhD research. And I, I worked with leather tanners in Tainan. Uh, then I went to Academia Sinica to the Institute of Sociology, where I had the pleasure of working with uh, Professor Michael Schell for, for two years there. Um, and so during that time, I think that Taiwan was opening itself up to me. Um, sometimes I think it's like one of those Russian puppet dolls, because as you think you understand things, you open it up and there's something else. And, you know, when I was in Tainan, people said to me, I said, I'm interested in Chinese culture and industrialization. That was the topic I thought of before I went to Taiwan. And they said, uh, <laughs> and they were like, we're not Chinese, we're, we're, we're Taiwanese. And so, and actually insisted I learned some some Taiwanese. And then, then I went to Taipei and started meeting people from all different groups. And among them was uh, an Italian entrepreneur who says to me, I'm not Taiwanese, I'm, I'm indigenous. And so teaching me about that. So I got into that. And so I think it was, that really got me into Taiwan studies finally. And I remember at the beginning of my career going in the, this is the late nineties, early 2000s, 20, 20, 20, and people would say to me, don't do Taiwan studies. It's a career killer. Don't do it. People would say to me, you and, you know, we, I would talk about Taiwan and then people would say, well, you have to admit that culturally they're Chinese. And I would say, well, no, I don't have to admit that because they don't believe that they are culturally Chinese. So I'm, I can't impose that on anybody. And so I'm really happy that Taiwan studies is really blossoming. And yes, I could make a career in Taiwan studies. I've done nothing else. For 20 years, I, you're in Japan, but and some Austronesian studies. But I really, most of my career, everything up, up to full professor made me, a, a, you know, a, a Taiwan studies. And so, yes, I can do what I love and make a career out of it. So what I want to say is just about this encyclopedia. There are three things I was very happy to accept the invitation because I think, first of all, we want to introduce Taiwan to the world. Secondly, we want to make Taiwan studies relevant to everybody else. So kind of like the project that Michael was talking about this morning in his keynote speech, that we want to make Taiwan relevant to world theory. But then thirdly, it's an encyclopedia. It's not a journal. And so we want to make sure that it's written in a language that is accessible to a general audience. Uh, that was often the difficulty in working with authors who are so used to writing journal articles because we don't want to have all of these in-text citations and and you know, complex, we want to make something that they can understand. But anyway, we went and at the beginning we met all the editors and we did a lot of brainstorming about who's going to do what, like indigenous music, does it go under Nancy's project or is it mine because I do the indigenous studies? And then, so we had to do that. And then I had the two lists there of anthropology and of indigenous studies. And the goal is to find the very best scholars in the world on all of these topics. And so to really have an understanding of Taiwan studies in North America, in Europe, obviously the best ones are going to be in Taiwan in most cases, um, but also Japan is very important in Taiwan studies. And, and so I, I reached out to, to Japanese scholars. And so um, I've also been very active in the indigenous studies in Japan. So, um, so anyway, that's basically the idea. But then I had two lists to work with. 
And so I had the anthropology list and I had the indigenous studies list. And those had very different joys and very different things to think about, different enjeux, different uh, um, ways, things to, really to think about. And so for an anth in the anthropology list, for example, um, it was the thing of trying to think about different traditions in anthropology and then encouraging people to write about, for example, what would be the contribution of, of, uh, of Taiwan and Taiwan studies to a better understanding of economic anthropology or political anthropology. Uh, we also wanted to uh, deal with uh, some of the more contemporary issues in anthropology. And so having people write about anthropology of the senses, anthropology of, oh, so many, <laughs> all kinds of different kinds of anthropology. And then um, indigenous studies, I think, was important to really draw attention to indigenous, not necessarily being Taiwanese, um, but being indigenous in different ways. So we reached out to uh, many of the indigenous scholars in Taiwan. Um, uh, Professor Hu Tai Li, who just recently passed away, unfortunately, was uh, wrote one of the entries. And so I'm very had the, happy that we have that opportunity to work with her, um, but also with uh, the indigenous and Japanese scholars, but also different aspects of uh, indigenous life in Taiwan, and also making it clear that from an indigenous perspective, that even Taiwan is an external imposition on them. Um, and so talking about things like ROC law as it comes to Taiwan and and uh, so, you know social movements, I think that went to the sociology session, they're going through, but also the, the phenomenological experience of being indigenous. So talking about hunting and relationships with the oceans and so forth. So, and I think there are very different product, product, pr different projects there, the anthropology one and the indigenous one. And all of it was very much of a, of a, of a learning experience. And although, yes, like Nancy, there were some authors who just never came up with what they promised, but I, I think that's inevitable. Um, some of them needed more help than others. Some of them needed translations from and or help with things from Chinese and Japanese. But that was that was a pleasure. I think that's important to do that. And so I just wanted to thank again Nora, who's done a fantastic job with every step of the way, all of the emails. Of course, Uri and Michael, you know, thank you all for for recruiting me. It was a real honor and a pleasure to be able to work on these two sections of the encyclopedia and i'm looking forward to celebrating its publication uh with everybody um online and um in press and uh i hope we're all in person without masks and worries about covid pretty soon so thank you everybody Hi, everyone, and there's the PowerPoint. Uh, let me also say what a pleasure it was actually to see Nora. She's an actual human being that we didn't fully understand previously. But also, this is the first time, at least for me, to see what the page is really going to look like online. All I've had before was text that I, I sent to her. So it, it was looked great to me, and I, I was really happy. And I feel like this project, which honestly has been an enormous amount of work just for me, and if you multiply that by 14, plus what Michael Shaw and the people at Brill have had to do, uh, I think it's a, a, a kind of stunning achievement that we're close to having um, done. I do, uh, related to the Brill side of things, have a quick question. Encyclopedias don't pay for themselves. And I would love if Michael or Uri at the very end maybe could address a little bit how the funding situation is working because it, I actually don't have any idea. So this first slide is just a, a summary of the religion entries. There are 49 entries, all of which are completed at this point from a total of 38 different contributors representing seven countries and 24 different academic institutions. Um, and then on the on the right, I've just specified the countries and the number in parentheses is the number of institutions. For obvious reasons, Taiwan is highly overrepresented um, there, but you'd expect that. I'm kind of happy with how international uh, the the rest of the palette is, though. So I feel good about I feel good about the um, the range of different kinds of scholars that we had. 
I thought a little bit like the two people who preceded me, I would talk a little bit about problems in doing this. I guess I won't repeat the logistical problems, authors who you just want to beat over the head, um, translations, I also had some that had to be translated, I have many non-native speakers, and I did a huge amount of editing just myself to try to turn it into a kind of comfortable English. Um, but at, leaving that aside, because I don't really have anything to add to what the others have already said, um, for me there are conceptual issues. I've never done an encyclopedia project like this before, and since Michael assigned me religion, the first problem is uh, I'm not really sure what religion is supposed to be, particularly in Taiwan, where, as you probably know, it's an introduced concept. And so it's a real concept, you're right, it's important in contemporary Taiwan, but it's one of those many um, social scientific and philosophical concepts first developed in early 20th century Japan and then brought into China from there. Um, and as such, it has problems describing the range of what I as an anthropologist would like to be calling religion. And the biggest problem is what we often call popular religion or folk religion or temple religion, or we don't know what to call it because it's actually no name. It's not a religion with a name or it wasn't. It was daily life. It was just part of life for people. So I've used popular religion often in the past just out of desperation, but both popular and religion are problematic. I don't want to take the time to talk about why they're problematic, but I handled that by really not having this category. There is, if you look up popular religion or folk religion in this encyclopedia, there's no entry. I just didn't put an entry because I really think that's a misleading label. Instead, there are a bunch of entries for a bunch of different things that are important to this no-name thing of life. So there are um, entries on ancestor worship, on gods, on ghosts, on temple worship, on pilgrimage, right? There are all kinds of things on, on, on spirit mediums, on all kinds of things that we would include um, under that category. And then I'm not uncomfortable using the word religion for things like, well, certainly Christianity, because the, the concept itself really came from Protestantism, um, uh, but Buddhism, um, Taoism, Islam. So there are entries, obviously there are entries for all of those things there. Uh, so that was one That was one kind of issue that I, I had to think about. Another was the overlap problem that others have talked about. And we had some, I remember we had a big Zoom session, a bunch of us at, at one point to try to work these out. But we also had many individual, like Scott and I went back and forth quite a few times about indigenous religion and how to handle it and who and which of us was going to take responsibility for it. it he gave it to me or stuck it on me or whatever. But, uh, but you know, those are just issues that have to be coordinated um, and it, it's hard. So the other thing I wanted to mention is it's not just, I really didn't want to do the Buddhism, vegetarian cults, Taoism, right, this kind of denomination oriented religious study, like intro to religion, uh, way of doing it, because there's so many issues that are cross-cutting. So religion and the environment, religion and Taiwan's liberalization, right? What was the religion, what's the role of religion in the educational system in, in Taiwan, where we have religious universities, and so on. So there are a lot of cross-cutting categories, too, really trying to think about what would a user of this encyclopedia find useful and interesting to look up, right? It's really, it's for them, and I tried to think about that as well as I could in developing the categories. I have one minute left, and I wish to use it in the following not very useful way. That is, um, this is the first third of all the entries. I know you can't read it. I doubt that the people on Zoom can read it either. Uh, it's not really intended for you to read. It's a teaser for the actual encyclopedia when it, it comes out or as, as it comes out in stages, although if you can read it at all, you can see some of the strategy. So they're in a relatively random order, but starting with a big category like Buddhism, which is a long, another 5,000 word entry, um, to a, a smaller entry on vegetarian halls, humanistic Buddhism, um, right, and ver various kinds of subcategories, a, a short entry on Vajrayana, that is Tibetan Buddhist influences on Taiwan's Buddhist traditions, and so on down the line at the bottom, except that I'm in the way, the picture of me is in the way, um, 
you could see some of the combined. Can I do that? No, never mind. I'll just show you another page. Um, but it's more of the same. But here you can see like religion and charity at the at the top. Um, religious ties to the mainland. Um, Mazu. So some, you know, some of them are quite specialized, but important, right? Mazu is the most important deity in in um, Taiwan. So there's an like an extra short entry, and many of the um, authors are really important people. Like Zhang Xu wrote the Mazu um, entry, and Oh. That's the last slide. Oh, in that case, I'm finished. Thank you. And the following presenter will all join us online. So first we have Professor Fell from London. Hi there. Hi, everyone again. Uh, so first of all, yeah, I, I really enjoy working with um, uh, Michael Xiao on this. We've worked together on Taiwan Studies uh, Revisited that come out of the, uh, the second uh, World Conference. But um, I have to say that it took a little bit of persuasion from uh, Michael to get me involved in this, this project. I just finished two other uh, edited volumes, uh, but I'm really glad that he did persist and um, uh, keep me involved in this, in this project. Firstly, for me, um, I can see just how valuable the, this project is going to be from a, a teaching perspective. Um, these entries are going to be so useful, I think, for different levels of Taiwan studies um, uh, teaching. And that also, to a large extent, actually guided me when I was looking at which items to include as entries. So I was really influenced by the kind of topics that we cover in um, teaching on Taiwan's domestic uh, politics. The other thing that I really enjoyed about this, this process um, was working with the entry authors. Um, and they were actually from uh, quite a diverse uh, bunch. Um, of course, many of them were, were um, the most influential figures in the field, but I also worked with a lot of uh, uh, junior scholars. Um, and even um, on a number, of, okay, a number of my entries actually written by um, former master students. And I think I have two entries that are written by really outstanding undergraduate students, which was really, again, really exciting for them and also for, um, uh, for me. And at times, actually, um, some of the more junior scholars wrote better entries than um, some of the more senior scholars, because I think, as a couple of us have mentioned, we're so used to writing in an academic style, um, while uh, often some of the junior scholars were much better at actually getting what it really means to write a, um, um, an encyclopedia entry. And the last thing I just wanted to do was just to um, have an appeal that um, uh, to see whether I, anyone would want to kind of volunteer to come in and, and write some of my missing uh, entries. So I think almost all my contracted entries are in now, but we had a few entries where we couldn't, I didn't manage to get people. And these are the, the topics. So if anyone is interested, please contact um, me. It's not too late. Authoritarianism, uh, offshore island politics, electoral debates, party identification, internet campaigning, and then the big one, national identity. So if anyone is interested, uh, please um, uh, get in touch. And thanks again, Michael, for being persuasive again. Okay, so thank you, Professor Fell. And next we have Professor Romsley from London as well. Hello. Um, so I have a PowerPoint, but anyway, without PowerPoint is fine too. All right, okay, I, I, I can see it now. Right, um, firstly, I want to say I really enjoy uh, working collectively with colleagues on project of Taiwan studies. Um, while it can be hard work, I always find uh, in the end the result is very rewarding and really satisfying. Um, and, and I end up always as a person I feel that learned most from the project uh, and also has a lot of fun. And for the Encyclopedia of Taiwan Studies, 
I was in charge with two sections, and one is a film and document, uh, documentary section. This is a relatively small section uh, with fewer entries. The other section is media section that I work with Professor Lin Liyun, and that one has more entries. And the two sections, actually, we have a different kind of approach to come up with entry titles, but we share the same idea of serving the reader, readership. So um, when we work with authors and also with the special copy editor that we hired for our sections, um, we really actually come in very much from what the reader would be like and how they um, will get from our uh, reading our entries for, uh, from the encyclopedia. Okay, so in terms of the film and documentary section, um, because, like I said, because there are fewer sections, so I come up with entries from a very kind of a broad brush in order to give people the, um, the major point yeah, so is is uh, you will get an understanding of the history of Taiwan cinema. You understand important film festivals and styles, uh, the major filmmakers, um, um, and also we try to cover um, as wide a geographical perspective on the study of Taiwan cinema. So the way I got my authors for this section, I did open calls. And so we end up have uh, a lot of uh, authors from North America, various countries in Europe, and from Brazil, and also a couple from <coughs> Taiwan. <coughs> okay. Um, in terms of the media section, then the entries, when Li Yun devised these uh, entries with me, we basically try to think about the development of Taiwan media. And, and also through this kind of a very, uh, the, the trajectory, what kind of issues it came up with, and perhaps the solutions um, the policymakers or the industry itself had come up with. So we also come up with these uh, entry titles in order to, to cover these wide areas that we think of. And for the media section, the authors we obtained by a commissioning. So they are the experts and knowing these uh, different areas very well. Um, so very good to see Nora's presentation, to see what these um, the encyclopedia will look like. And so I imagine, um, so I think actually the final product in some way match our imagination, um, although with some slight difference. But still, I find actually for the general readers, um, we hope actually they really will, if they read from top to bottom of the particular section, they will have a uh, obtained a, as much information and factual um, information as they can, and to understand the development of Taiwan cinema and also the development of Taiwan media. But for the experts um, in the field, I'm sure they will also gain a lot of insight like myself, actually, when I read these two sections from top to bottom, I do find I have um, gained so much more from I previously anticipated. So while I'm the editor, I fear I'm also a learner and have learned a great deal from these two sections. And so I really appreciate Professor Xiao for giving me this opportunity to be involved. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you so much. And next we have Professor He from Sociology Department from Taiwan. Hi everyone, um, my name is Ming Jiao He. Uh, I'm in charge of the field of sociological entry. Again, um, it's my pleasure to get involved in this great project. So uh, what I'm going to do here is to explain what I've been done in the past year. So in a, in a sociological field, uh, uh, Professor Xiao and, and me, we originally planned 60 entries, but we only came up with uh, 57, meaning that three were missing in the process. Although we have uh, people who promised to do that, but in, in the end, it didn't turn out that way. So, so we only end up with uh, 57. Um, and also, uh, um, we have 54 authors for the entry. So only two, uh, two authors were 
in charge of uh, more than one entries. Uh, so uh, it's, it's great to have so many people with us here. So I'll explain uh, a little bit on how I plan the entries. As I said, we have uh, originally uh, um, at 60 entries. So what I, what I was doing first last year was to turn uh, to a sociological textbook to see what are the entries that are, what are the main a a theory concepts that are important to the discipline. But it soon turned out that it's not a good way because a lot of uh, uh, the discipline sociology uh, talk about a lot of things, but that does not really have relevance to Taiwan. So instead, I, I began to turn to uh, look at what Taiwanese-based uh, or Taiwanese-focused sociology uh, was study at a time. So, for example, in, instead of like a, 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 a chapter, a, 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 an article on sociology of education, so we have an entry on expansion of higher education. And also, we all know that stratification or class structure is a very important topic in sociology. But rather than talk about class per se, uh, we have uh, like a class mobility during economic takeoff, which is a very important process because we know many bosses originally or originated from working class background in the Taiwan. And also we have an entry on middle class, knowing that uh, the rise of middle class has played a very important role in, the, in Taiwan's democratic transition. So, so the one of the uh, inspiration is to look at what so Taiwan sociology have been doing in the past, and the other uh, area or the other cluster of entries uh, is more like a social problem approach, meaning that what are I'm I'm, I'm I just try to look at what are the current tendencies disputes that uh, are that a lot of Taiwanese sociology are engaged with. So these are the important trends that have sociological importance here in Taiwan. And entry in this cl classification, including like uh, declining fertility rate, China factor, aging society, decarbonization, financialization and speculation, and heritage preservation, also uh, non-standard work. So I think this is our uh, important social trends in Taiwan, and we have accumulated quite a number of scholarly works. I think we can re recruit this effort in this project. And also the last cluster uh, I plan is more about historical process, because we cannot just concern with what is happening right now. And there are some uh, social process or sociological process in the past that has a bearing on the contemporary society. So these are the process I, I also want to include in, in, in this field. And this will include the uh, entry like uh, family planning, land reform and farmland, post-industrial transition and state-led industrialization and, and so on. And so altogether, as I said, we have 57 entries um, which have been all submitted to, to, the, to the editors. And also, I want to uh, explain a little bit more about uh, how we select the authors. Basically, the list of the authors have been decided by Professor Michael Xiao and me uh, jointly. Uh, I do have a preference or agenda. I, I want to more, uh, to present a more broadly based uh, list of participation, uh, more inclusive list, and that including regionally, because um, as, as as my predecessor has said, uh, a lot of uh, writers are primarily based in Taiwan, but I, I also want to make this project as global as possible. So we do have authors based in Australia, Singapore, North America, and Europe. And also, uh, I want to enlist as many as possible those who scholars who are in their early academic career, and knowing that uh, uh, not only because that they will probably not to reject my offer and invitation, but also because knowing that they have longer uh, life expectancy in the academic career. So maybe they will be more like to promote this project. It's good to have established authority to work on this project, but I think it's also good to have younger people uh, who might be more enthusiastic uh, 
about this project uh, based on my experience that um, uh, when I contact an established scholar, most of the time they were simultaneously engaged with a number of projects. So they don't really necessarily prioritize this uh, invitation. And also have experience that I can, I, I have established uh, contact with an established scholar. And in the end, when the deadline is approaching, uh, the person doesn't really have no time to do that. So what happened is that the entry actually has a new additional author. Uh, so so you see that probably this is a more like collaborative job. So what I have is for my 54 authors, I have six at this, uh, at, at the time of contact, either they were doctoral students or postdoc fellows. And I really love the, the input here. Um, and finally, I have one minute left. And so what, my job is primarily uh, uh, communicating and explaining all the agenda. So a lot of effort has been done in the coordination and knowing that different people were working on different schedule. What I have, when I have first draft, I would do some preliminary editing and suggestion and send back to the author if necessary. And if when the author came back with a finalized entry, I will also forward to Professor Michael Shaw for the for second level uh, reading. Um, and some of the articles are actually uh, reviewed by Professor Zhao and, and also provided with a lot of uh, suggestion. So this is uh, how the process uh, work. And so again, I'm really feeling the, the privilege to be a privilege and a, a pleasure to be this great project. I am my uh, uh, lecturer here. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. And then we have next uh, is the Professor Chong from Taiwan. Uh, good morning, I'm Long Chi Chang. Uh, uh, and right now I'm in uh, Tainan and from the National Museum of Taiwan History. It's my great honor to be able to teaming up with all these prestigious uh, teachers and colleagues uh, for this uh, important project on Taiwan studies. And it is also uh, my great pleasure to see uh, all these, all my friends and teachers, and especially uh, the brilliant colleagues, Nora and others, uh, lively. And uh, the history uh, section of the Encyclopedia of Taiwan Study is aiming uh, for providing an uh, and contextualized intellectual uh, landscape of the development of Taiwan history as both as a uh, discipline and also as a new field of uh, intellectual pursuit. Uh, the, the design of for uh, or the, the 50 entries is, can be divided into four sections. Uh, the first section is uh, focused on different historical periods uh, aiming to uh, introduce to the authors uh, the major uh, events and development and, and especially how these uh, different eras are uh, played in, in the overall development of the island history. And the second uh, section focused on topics uh, we try to uh, bring up uh, from traditional important subjects such as local society to the new uh, development, for example, environmental history in the field of Taiwan studies. And the third section is uh, focused more on uh, specific events and personalities and try to introduce to the authors some of the basic and but uh, significant uh, facts and, and how they got studies and developed and interpreted uh, in the field of Taiwanese historiography. And the fourth in the last section is about historical sources, archives, and historiographical uh, development. And these four sections uh, constitute the major content of the history section of the, uh, of the ETS. Uh, I have uh, tried to invite it, uh, uh, both uh, authors from Taiwan and, and overseas and try to uh, provide it an most updated and representative uh, landscape of how this field has been developed and in the, the, in the state of the field is. So we have uh, major authors from Academia Sinica and also from major universities such as National Taiwan University, a normal university and Zhengzhou University. But we also try to include uh, important uh, representative authors from uh, the United States, UK, Europe, and also Japan. So uh, with this uh, in intellectual uh, composition of authors, uh, we try to uh, uh, provide a general sense how this field of Taiwan history has been uh, studied and uh, has been uh, inquired 
uh, from by uh, by different scholars from different intellectual perspectives. And uh, so far, we have uh, collected more than uh, twenty to thirty entries, and uh, the other one has been uh, vigorously uh, in progress. Hopefully, we can get all the uh, entries available by the end of this summer, and and. Uh, got edited and uh, proofread it. Uh, some of them are translated. I think for myself, uh, my, uh, the major challenge are, both, are, are twofold. One is uh, intellectually. I, I will try to, uh, how to uh, present a gen overall, but also diversified a picture of the study of Taiwanese, contemporary Taiwanese historiography. And the other challenge is more practical. Uh, because of my new position uh, in the museum last April, I got overwhelmed by all, all this uh, mundane affairs. So I invited uh, Professor Peter Kong, who is now serving as the director of uh, Taiwan uh, uh, Institute of Taiwan History in the uh, National Normal University. Uh, we tried to uh, work work uh, vigorously to catch up with the schedule. And uh, so far we have been making uh, progress, but uh, still need more efforts uh, in order to uh, meet uh, the bigger deadlines. And I think uh, for a general audience, uh, the uh, compare with the other sections, uh, it is very, uh, I think for the authors as well, it is very difficult to distinguish how to write an entry on Taiwan history per se, and but and uh, in uh, compared to how to write an entry about uh, Taiwan studies, especially Taiwan uh, histo Taiwanese historiography. So um, we're trying to uh, trying to work with the authors intensively uh, to try to provide a, a, a to strike a balance between these uh, these two uh, two uh, different uh, uh, angles and I think overall uh, although it's very it's a very challenging uh, process uh, both intellectually and, and uh, physically but I think uh, for myself and also I think for many of my colleagues as well it's, it's a rewarding and and uh, uh, it's a very rewarding uh, and also a learning process. And, and hopefully uh, by the end of this summer, uh, I can also celebrate uh, the completion and of the submission of all the entries like uh, my predecessors. And, and hopefully uh, this, and, and I'm also looking forward uh, to uh, the, uh, the, the launch of this uh, e-version e and also the print version of, of this important encyclopedia. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you very much, everyone. And Professor Cho cannot join us today, but she has a recorded message to share with us. Hi, everyone. I'm Hui Fen Chu from National Zhongxin University in Taiwan. I'm so sorry that I cannot join you uh, in person um, today, but I think that uh, this uh, pre-recording would uh, just do as well. Okay, uh, literature entries are divided into uh, four main groups. The group Taiwan Literature in Periodization aims to present a general picture of the development of Taiwan literature from the uh, classical Chinese language period to uh, the present. And entries in uh, special topics in Taiwan literature cover important research topics such as LGBT literature, Taiwan cinema and Taiwan literature, children's literature, etc. There are also entries that can be called Taiwan literature in the world. These entries deal with the uh, translation and reception of Taiwan literature in different countries, such as Japan, Germany, France, Italy, and the uh, English uh, speaking world. I also include an entry on the uh, National Museum of Taiwan Literature and one on the Association of Taiwan Literature because uh, these uh, are quite important institution and association are devoted to the study and promotion of Taiwan Literature. Finally, uh, we have entries about individual writers. Of course, there are many more Taiwan writers than the list we have um, in this uh, encyclopedia. So I limit the uh, list to uh, writers whose works have appeared in English uh, scholarship. 
as an associate editor, I found several uh, challenges. First of all, the uh, international community of scholars working on Taiwan literature is uh, quite small. And the, uh, okay, the uh, contributors who write about the uh, translation and reception of Taiwan literature, such as um, Henning Clutter, Wanel Gafik, Federica Passi, all mentioned that there is a lack of structured and consistent approach to Taiwan literature in their countries. And this is uh, quite different from the uh, situation of the study of mainland Chinese literature. Even if I can find scholars with the uh, expertise to write about specific entries, they may not have time to uh, take part in these uh, projects. Everyone in the uh, academic world is so overburdened. So I think the uh, involvement of uh, Taiwanese experts is quite important. This uh, publishing project, I think, uh, should involve um, uh, Taiwanese uh, scholars and uh, scholars who are outside Taiwan. Now, in addition to the uh, problems of expertise and time constraints, language is also a big problem. Some Taiwanese uh, contributors submitted well-translated um, entries but there are, of course, uh, some entries which are submitted in Chinese and need uh, to be translated. And as we all know, translation is uh, very expensive and it usually takes a lot of time to edit um, the, the translated versions. Luckily, I was able to submit all the teacher entries to the Brio production team in April. This is because uh, all the uh, contributors are uh, devoted to this project and only one uh, contributor dropped out due to family uh, business. The uh, entries I received uh, very well uh, written entries. The contributors are true experts and uh, most important of all, they are interested in the entries they write. I took some steps to help the contributors uh, complete their entries on time. First of all, I make it very clear in the invitation letter about the time schedule and the word limit. And then I also provide a sample entry and style guideline. I also discuss the jobs with my contributors. I think that uh, keep communication going is quite important. So finally, I want to give a big thanks to all the contributors of literature. And also, uh, I should uh, thank Dr. Michael Shao for um, inviting me to serve as the associate editor for um, literature entries. And of course, thanks should go to uh, the Brio production team, particularly Nora, who has been uh, extremely helpful and supportive in the uh, whole process. Thank you. Okay, so that concludes our presentation and let's welcome our in-person speakers to the front and our technical team will bring all the virtual presenters on the screen. So we have about 20 minutes left. If you have any questions for our contributors, please uh, address them. And just to help with our audio, it will be best if you can come forward and use the microphone to ask your question. It's way too hot, <laughs> it's sweating. Um, I'm Eric Chen from uh, the National Taichung University. And uh, my, my, my question for, for all of the entities here is, um, uh, what kinds of uh, general, general uh, audience uh, are we targeting to? Are they just uh, people who with uh, university level, um, reading English, or we have a more specific kind of uh, readers in the general uh, general audience here. 
um, in the world. Thank you. Yuri, would you like to answer? Sure. So, so if I understood correctly, the question is about the audience of the uh, encyclopedia, which is on all of our minds. So we are aiming for educated general readers. So people, they don't have to be experts of Taiwan or even China, but they should be interested in Taiwan enough to look up entries in the encyclopedia. The entries were all written in a way that a general educated reader might be able to understand them. So as some of the speakers before mentioned, um, there are no, for example, um, uh, lots of references, in-text references. We don't use jargon terms that maybe only uh, people in the field will understand. We try to really address it to, the co to a common denominator, but no, not a low common denominator but an educated reader denominator. I don't know if Professor Xiao or, or anybody else has any, anything to add. I think this is, is correct, that I think the general reader is our target. Uh, in every entry, we do not have the uh, include a citation. Uh, we told the entry writers not to include citations, but to do include uh, useful bibliographies to each entry so that uh, if an uh, interested reader wanted to know more, uh, they they can go ahead uh, finding the, the related to bibliography to, uh, to find a further uh, information and research. By the way, it is the first encyclopedia of Taiwan studies. Okay. Uh, thank you for the responses. Any other one want to respond? Yes. Hi, I'm Paul Katz from Academia Seneca. This uh, question is mostly for Uri Todmore, but maybe Professor Xiao as well. Uh, we all know that Braille books are very expensive. Uh, do we have any idea of, A, the price for this encyclopedia, and also the online materials uh, are they going to be free or do you have to pay a fee to access them? And then the other question which Rob asked is sort of what sort of financial support has been, uh, apart from Brill itself, has been supporting this project? Thank you. Thanks. Thanks for the very good question. So I can, I can address uh, both parts of the questions. So first of all, we are very uh, grateful that we have received some assistance from two organizations. So first of all, when we started out in the project, we had in mind two or three or maybe four editors, but Professor Xiao made the point that it should really be a team effort involving a large group of editors, about 15 editors. And then um, the uh, Taiwan Asia Exchange Foundation came to the rescue and enabled us to actually hire a large group of uh, of editors, even though they're only compensated very modestly, uh, but at least it enabled us to get a large group. Now, the second uh, stage came once we already had the entries and we realized that the vast majority of authors were actually from Taiwan. And some of them were not, perhaps not used to writing to an international audience, perhaps not used to writing in academic English, and we realized that we are really going to have to, in addition to the wonderful work that all the associate editors and the editor in chief have, uh, have been doing, we will also have to copy edit professionally, uh, do what we call heavy copy editing in the, in the professional jargon and not just light copy editing, which is uh, language polishing. And again, another um, NGO came to the rescue and that's the, uh, Chiang Ching Kuo Foundation for International Scholarly Exchange. Uh, and they have uh, very recently uh, gave us the good news that they will provide us with sufficient funding to cover most of the copy editing costs. But of course, there are many, many other costs. You know, we have our building, our four-story building in the Netherlands, which we rent. We have offices all around the world. 
We have hundreds of employees that we have to pay for. We have to pay corporate taxes and other taxes. So there are many, many other costs. So, of course, we cannot provide the encyclopedia for free. Um, it will be published in print. The price, I, can, I cannot tell you what the price will be now because the pricing calculations are done right before the actual publication. And the uh, print uh, publication will only be ready at the end of next year. I can tell you that it, it will be slightly lower than our other encyclopedias because of the assistance that we have received, but it will still be pricey. It will be meant for libraries and not for individuals, unless you know the individuals are real specialists or, or happen to be well-to-do. The electronic version, it is not going to be, you saw what it's going to be. It's not going to be a series of eBooks based on the, on the print. It's going to be a full-fledged relational database with lots of functionality. Uh, now at Brill, we are working with about 15 uh, technology companies around the world to enable us to publish such reference works. They build our platforms, they maintain our platforms, they help us with all technical difficulties, uh, we need to get a ticket for every change and so forth. And there are many, many things that you don't even see behind the scenes. All of these things have to be paid for, and it will be paid by the price of the encyclopedia, both the online edition and the print edition. Um, if you're interested uh, to know more about the profitability of Braille, Braille actually, among similar publishers, is very modest in its expectations for uh, profitability. So at least in the years that I've been in real, we have never even reached 10% uh, net profit. It's usually only a couple of percentage points. So we are not one of the big guys who aim for a 20 or 30% uh, net profit. We are much more modest, but I think for this reason, we are also more popular among authors and editors. Uh, this is what I can tell you right now about assistance and about funding and, uh, and, and pricing. Uh, Yuri, how about uh, would you charge the, uh, for the reader to search in the e-journal, e-edition? -E the electro and yes, the, the electronic, yes. So the electronic, the production of the electronic edition, the online edition, will be way more expensive than the print books. Uh, people tend to think of things that you get online, they're free. They're not. We have to have an entire IT team at Brill. As I mentioned, we have to hire the, the services of 15 different very expensive technology companies. So actually, the electronic version is going to be more expensive than the print version. Okay. Okay. And I understand there will be four volumes in the set, right? Yes. Yeah, we have, we have uh, been planning for four volumes. Uh, we are still leaving for the possibility that if last minute we get an avalanche of entries and we have many more than 600 entries, we can still do five volumes, but the plan is for four volumes. Thank you. Sure. And now uh, all the uh, participants know the, uh, we have a book cover already. It's, uh, it's the image of Taiwan away the cherries bronson okay please actually a plum blossom plum blossom oh okay yes which <laughs> is a which, which we found out is a national flower of taiwan oh yes that's right you are right you're right mm -hmm. hey thank you uh, for the responses does anyone have any more questions from the audience So I'm curious, I think many of you mentioned that you had to translate from Chinese to English. And do you ever think about publishing this backward, like try to make this accessible to the Chinese audience? Uh, Professor Shao, please unmute. Yeah. I'm not sure if Rio has the idea to uh to have a Chinese edition, Mandarin edition. Yeah, we, we don't, we publish about Chinese, but we don't publish in Chinese. 
if there is an interested publisher in Taiwan who is interested in doing the translation and publishing it, of course, we'll be happy to discuss it with them. But it's probably not going to be something that Brill itself is going to do. But we do, inc we do encourage the associate editor in different sections to come up with the, uh, you know, sort of a synopsis of the, uh, of the entries and what does it composite the sociology uh, in media in Taiwan history. And uh, what does this uh, 40, 50, 30 entries to come up with the, the image, the intellectual image of Taiwan history, the sociological study, the media and documentary and, and other 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 field as well. That will be interesting for this associate editor to continue uh, working on to repro to produce another intellectual uh, product. Any other questions? If not, I would like to uh, take this opportunity to recognize the other associate editors who are not present uh, today. Uh, Ellen Young in international relations, Elizabeth Zaiten in linguistics and languages, and Andrew, Andrew Lee in gen, on gender and women's studies, and Zhang Zhenghua uh, on archaeology, and Ling Liyun on media study. And um, thank you, uh, uh, Mingye, you, uh, you also take care, took, in care, took care of the media studies, and also Liao Xintian, Xintian Liao. Uh, uh, taking care of the art. So we do have uh, 15 fields instead of 14, 15 and 14 associate editors. Okay, yeah, thank you so much. It's definitely a big, big accomplishment. And I think everybody's looking forward to the publication of this great work. So we should give everyone a big round of applause. Thank you for joining us both virtually and in person.